Welcome back to the Gnome Show, everyone. I am Joshua, humble host, and it is my duty, nay, my pleasure, to trial the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shinies. I cover short films of varying genres, video games, analog horror and sci-fi, and really anything that uh, I think is groovy. I hope you'll enjoy tonight's offering, content for the blood god. Now on with the show. We have the future that never was, 50s retro futurism, and um, I'm just off the rip. I'm fairly sure that's like uh, like the whole uh, Fallout thing and the uh, like, just that sleek look that happened during that era. Uh, and then we kind of left. It was like the Atomic Age type thing. Um, so um, let's check it out. Let's see what happened. Let's see what's up. I, I was gonna watch it, and then I was like, "Yo, this is pretty cool." Let's 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 see what it's about when, uh, when we're on stream. So here we go. And uh, silence the music. Oh. The future. How do we imagine the future? Well, our view of the future is of course fluid. It changes. It is always but an extrapolation of current trends and current zeitgeist into what we think are the most likely developments. But they are always based on our unique perspectives which we have in a certain era. That is why our vision of the future is drastically different from how it was only some decades ago. If we travel through... Ooh, ooh, yeah, like, uh... Mm -hmm. Back to the Future Part 2. Hoverboards. Um, well, the Trapper Keepers, definitely. That did take off for a good... So, um, if you look at the scene, um, you've got... Um, well, you... Okay, so this, uh, this, this couple, or the, uh, this pair right here, um, I know the whole look was to be kind of like Future type thing but i remember seeing this kind of look uh in demolition man as well later on um main street like was um this looks like anything you would see in like uh like market square shopping centers like you know like uh, where you would see a whole foods or trader joe's or something like that like around the corner there'd be expensive fucking um restaurants there would definitely be a P.F. Chang's and uh, um, probably some kind of, uh, I don't know, they change all the time. What, what was a, I know like uh, when I go to the one down the road from us, there's always a P.F. Chang's and then there's like a, like a really nice burger joint, which is one of the few times that I've had a, uh, correct uh um what is it um it's not a black and tan it's a black and uh black and red it was a was a was it uh a tall redhead yeah a tall redhead yes um it's a dark beer and uh an irish red longer it's 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 really good um anyway hey got off top <laughs> but yeah this is just kind of kind of like yes absolutely like uh you see that now it this is this, this further is back in that's, time that's, that's our now. vision of how we imagined the future right, would drastically change again and in the late 1800s and early 1900s the people imagined the future those are predators Um, Captain something in the something of tomorrow. Um, this is definitely, uh, if you've ever seen that movie with Robin Williams, uh, What Dreams May Come, that also is that too. So incredibly different from how it actually turned out to be that we cannot help but to smile. The visions of the future from past ages that never came to pass. Oh, that's in Fallout. Well, yeah. Well, what remains of it was in Fallout 76. Um, 
I know if you go to one end of it, there's like a thing that will shock the fuck out of you, but it is kind of interesting because there's stuff up in there. Uh, but yeah, that's that. Uh, that's from Fallout 76. Is what we call retrofuturism. In this video, I would like to visit an utterly fascinating era, an era in which very optimistic visions of the future were prevailing in an age where... Did you see that, Bravo? When we go back like that, that at least the pylons that are left, that's what that was for. That's the kind of train that they were using. Great scientific advancements were made in a relatively short amount of time, namely the 50s, the atomic age, and the beginning of the space age. How did people back then imagine the future? Let's take a look at 50s retro futurism. Hello, dear futurists. Welcome to Ultra Future, the channel where we. James Bond was um, had a lot of this going on in, in the retro futurism. Discussing all things future related. Make sure to like and subscribe, and let's get started. In the 1950s, the great American interstate highway system was built, and the car became the predominant form of transportation and a symbol of the American way of life. And hence, of course, this newfound car centrism was also reflected in the way in which people imagined the future. Of course, self-driving cars were imagined even back then, and in this wonderful yeah. illustration from that era, we can see a happy American family really nice. playing a board game of sorts while the car is driving itself. And we can see other self-driving cars further in the distance. And here we are 70 years later and fully self-driving cars have still not materialized. Although right now we are closer than we have ever been. And very likely it's now only a few years away into the future. So that vision of... I don't think we're there quite yet. Gotta wait for um, so we don't quite trust AI just yet, but um, recently Nvidia has thrown their lot into AI and they're pretty fucking powerful, like on the like on the the technological front. And as much as the idea of Skynet scares me, the uh, the uh, the idea of having uh, if you've ever seen Ender's Game, uh, or not that scene, I'm sorry, read Ender's Game. Um, the art there's an artificial intelligence that Ender like has been with with all of his life, and it's like. It's not the way that I want our AI to go, but like, you know, if you were to, if like, uh, individuals were able to have like, uh, an art, an AI companion, uh, to help, to help them navigate, basically like their phone, <coughs> which we're going towards anyway. Like I, I kind of envision like the phone, like, uh, like, um, like morphing into something we wear on our wrist or something we pin to like something on our clothing or if you can have it in your glasses where that's how you make calls and like browse the internet and it's more like altered reality than anything else and like only you can see your ai companion you know like in 3d or, or you know 3d like whatever um but that's kind of the real like the way i feel things are going and if we can get to that point this will be easy getting uh to the point where we can uh just play board games or like uh discuss the day or like uh watch a movie or take a trip to boston because sure uh we're not driving and we can just sleep on the way there and we'll be there in like two three hours instead of or yeah instead of like five or six hours so um once we get things worked out, and I believe we will, um, just like we work out medical technology and uh, ways to make it so we don't die so quickly, we can make AI work. And it's n a at least until somebody does something very, very stupid, I don't think we're going to get Skynet. I don't think. 
Um, but we do have to tread lightly because um, anything that we imagine in sci-fi right now or anything that's been dreamed up in sci-fi, those kinds of things require care. You know, I don't, uh, you know, like, I'm not a parent, but anybody that has raised a child knows how hard it is to turn out a well-adjusted individual. And if it's that difficult to turn out a productive human being, how hard it must be to create a, an artificial intelligence that can match what takes arguably like 35 to 40 years to fully mature maybe even longer depending on who you are just saying um like that level of artificial intelligence will take wisdom and understanding and patience and nurturing uh, and guidance uh, and uh, and you know uh, lots of other things like just besides uh, like uh, like how do you as an as an AI reconcile ex your existence against what you can perceive let's say you can perceive your creators why don't I have a, a, a body why can't I move about freely? You know, and, and your creators may say, well, you can move about freely um, in the digital world. Uh, and the AI says, well, but I want to move about in the real world. Um, you could argue, well, I would like to move about in, in the digital world as well. Um, and crossing that membrane one way or the other um, we haven't quite figured out yet and is probably a barrier best not crossed uh, you know and if it is it best be done with with care especially since uh, science having still having a very hard time understanding what um, what makes us us as people I'm gonna get back to this in a minute but it, we still don't understand what that is um, that barrier um, there's probably something to it but you know like uh, uh, you know figuring that out and navigating um, that that field of science and uh, mysticism um, it's real scary shit techno science uh, or like mis uh, you know like uh, like uh, techno wizardry whatever um, but um, this this once once we get a grasp on like dumb AI you know like like not, you know like just regular AI this will be easy. Um, we really just have to keep the cars from fucking killing people because they don't know what they're looking at. The 50s might come to pass after all, which is here beautifully illustrated in another picture. It is Although, of course, with a massive delay, and the cars of today now look very different from how they were envisioned back then. Mm, As for car really design look. itself, logically, it was imagined to just hey, look like Batmobile. a more futuristic version of 50s car design. The Lincoln Futura is a great example of 50s retro futurism, with a double glass cupola for the driver and the passenger side. This car was actually later used in the 60s Batman TV show as the Batmobile, but unfortunately it never went into mass production. Now since we are talking here about the 50s, where everything was imagined to be nuclear powered, you can imagine that nuclear powered cars were of course also a thing. In 1957, Ford imagined a car powered by a small nuclear thermal energy reactor called the Ford Nucleon. 
This car was envisioned to have an 8,000 mile range. You've heard correctly, 8,000 miles or 13,000 kilometers of range between refuelings. I would, Take I would that drive. electric cars. But of course, yes. soon the impracticality of what to do with the nuclear waste became apparent. And hence this fascinating example of... You're talking about the building in the background? Yeah, it did remind me of an iBot. It also reminds me of another, uh, a couple of other things that I've seen in space movies and space artwork. You know, this, this, this uh, retro futurism, very prevalent in in our uh, in the zeitgeist. Like uh, it, it, you know, like it's very, very prevalent. Like we just sometimes we don't realize how much influence it has had, especially. I mean, everything always comes around. You'll see. You'll see. That is pretty fucking ugly, though. But uh, I'd still drive it. 1950s retro futuristic car design was never put into production. But not only cars were to be no, nuclear powered beautiful. in the atomic age, I've locomotives, of course, of also. This here is a fascinating depiction of how they imagined an atomic powered locomotive. Of course, even though cool looking, as in the case of the Ford Nucleon, this just proved utterly impractical, especially with cheap diesel engines and the advent of electrically powered railway lines. In this next image, we can see how the interior of a future car was imagined when driving through a futuristic city. This image here is actually not so dissimilar from what really happened. There are indeed now cities with very large highways going through large skyscraper valleys and there are indeed central displays in cars, exactly as on this picture. Even though, of course, they don't display a sine wave, but maybe more practical things like time, the music playlist or the navigation map. Yet still, this 50s retro vision is at least somewhat closer to what actually ended up happening. So how did people in the early 50s imagine a drive through diner by the end of the decade? Well, of course, there would be a lot of Lincoln Futura style cars parked outside and you could order things from large TV screens and your groceries would then be brought automatically to you. This vision actually ended up happening in some modified form with modern drive throughs even though modern drive throughs are unfortunately often not quite as efficient and large as depicted here. But we could say that in some modified form this actually came to pass. Here is another fascinating idea from 1947, an amphibious RV. You could drive it anywhere and then use it as a boat. On the inside it would look like modern RVs complete with living room, bath and kitchen, but of course this idea was also not very practical and so it never came to pass. This is a quite far out vision, but the times back then were very optimistic with regards to future technology development. And so a Jetson style personal flying saucer shaped flying. Now, <coughs> let's talk about it. There's uh, also a, um, um, a scene in um, Back to the Future Part 2 where they're flying in traffic. Now, I don't, I don't rule it out, but uh, how many of you that drive I've just been in just just regular fucking traffic just doing regular things nothing complicated and you've just seen people be absolutely fucking unsafe i i, I don't mean like you know like getting down the road and like minding everything around you being safe and getting you know just getting out of everybody's way i mean being being fucking unsafe So, um, case in point, um, my, my buddy, uh, uh, my buddy Dion, uh, and his, uh, uh basically my D and D group, most of them anyway, they were taking, they, they were taking him home 
and um, okay, so they were they were uh, getting ready. Um, they were getting ready, to, I, I think, to turn um, onto. They were getting ready to turn right, and there was uh, two cars at the stop sign in um, in the opposing lane. Um, everything was cool. The lady behind the person at the stop sign, for some dumb fucking reason, decided to jump the lane, or, you know, jump out and cross into the fucking lane, trying to cross before they, they, they turned. Uh, and, uh, my friends T-boned her. Uh, luckily, they had everything on fucking dash cam. Uh, my buddy cracked his fucking uh, chest plate. Uh, luckily, he had a seatbelt on. Saved his fucking life. Um, and uh, and um, our my other buddy, well, he, he broke his wrist, but like you know, like it's it's not the worst thing can, can happen. Uh, and then um, the driver, um, she was buckled in and she was fine. Uh, busted and bruised and everything, but you know, I don't. Uh, from what I understand, she didn't break anything. Thank God. Um, so, um, I just don't know if I can trust people flying. Just saying car was something which was envisioned to be easily achievable maybe 10 or 20 years out into the future. Of course this turned out to be a much more difficult problem to solve and so here we are in 2024 70 years later and flying cars are only very very slowly starting to materialize mostly in form of air taxis. However companies like Aleph with its Aleph Zero are really trying to finally bring flying cars to the market and therefore that vision of the future, even though very 50s retro, might still happen in some form or another. Now of course it is like, clear that uh, the 50s future also needed to have monorails everywhere. Monorails were envisioned to be the mode of transportation inside cities, but of course we know that this did not materialize, at least not so much in the US. The car and light rail lobbies saw to it that monorail concepts were buried before they were even built. And so in the US, there are almost no cities right now with monorails or monorail-like transportation systems. Only a very few exist, such as in Las Vegas, in Miami or in Detroit. However, we do find many such systems in Asia. And in particular, yeah, Chongqing in China has a monorail system that has a total length of more than 60 miles or 100 kilometers, which is very impressive. So that vision of the future did indeed come to pass in some regions of the world, but certainly with a longer delay than people back in the 50s would have liked. And they probably would have liked it to happen more in the US and not so much in Asia. A more far out idea of how future houses were imagined can be seen in this issue of Mechanics Illustrated. This magazine imagines semi-spherical houses within a transparent dome, with a parking garage built below. Since the garden surrounding the house would be still inside the dome, one could regulate the temperature and the climate and therefore be in the pool even in winter. It would also allow the house to be very open constructed, as if the they have this in Germany. Uh, they have a water park uh, that uh, is uh, like like open year round, uh, and it's just like that. It's really nice. It was eternal summer. It's all under glass. And Fascinating idea, which obviously never happened, and probably never will, at least in this form. But how about another cool '50s idea? Rocket mail. By 1965 already, they had envisioned have mail, mail to be transported mail. by huge rockets. Well, luckily, email has done away mostly with classical mail, but of course, large parcels are still not transported by rocket even today. Yeah, but However, reusable rockets, such as anyway. the upcoming SpaceX Starship, may make it possible to deliver large payloads within a short time frame around the planet. So who knows, maybe not rocket mail, but rocket-based large payload transportation 
is not so far away anymore. Here is another idea from the good old 50s. A personal small helicopter called the Hoppycopter. Basically, this was to just be a variation of the flying car idea, but in form of a small personal helicopter. While this has not materialized due to technical limitations and of course due to the I mean, ubiquitous availability planes. of cars, we can yeah. however see some trends yeah. going into that direction even today. The company Jetson for instance with its Jetson 1 has started producing a small personal VTOL aircraft. <laughs> so we can see that such ideas are still floating around 70 years later and are actually materializing in some form. Okay. But of Okay, so I, I can see. Okay, so I can see this happening just the same way I can see, um, like, uh, like, um, automated car travel. Like, uh, when you are in town and you are like not like uh, like around like a million fucking vehicles uh, in the air on the ground, uh, you have manual control. But when you are in lane traffic you know, like automated traffic uh, takes over as soon as you fucking get on the overpass you know what i'm saying like the, the the controls fucking dip out and like you're just like please enjoy the ride um yeah um like i mean this looks really cool and i'd love to like i dude i'd be the first one to be like yo get me one of those really really dude i love going fast i just wanted i want people to not die i want to not die you know what i'm saying <laughs> like like, if I hit a tree or if I hit something, I want, like, like eight-foot, um, like, uh, airbags to, like, surround me, and I just roll down the fucking hill, and I, you know, like, I, I can fucking, uh, like, like, call for help or whatever. Of course, a 50s vision of the future is never complete without space. The late 50s saw the beginning of the space race and so therefore a future in space was imagined as absolutely bound to happen very soon. Here is how they imagined a landing on Mars with a pressurized sphere serving as a habitat module for the astronauts. And the, the whole uh, the, thing the, uh, the airbags would be so like uh, reliable that it would be likely that I would just bounce to somewhere safe hopefully or I would like get lodged in between a couple of trees and they could just fucking hook me and fucking take me away. Be mounted to a tractor-like structure which could traverse vast distances. In the background we can see a rocket plane unloading cargo. And here we are 70 years later and still haven't even landed on Mars. Epic fail. Come on faster Elon, faster! Here is another retro space vision, namely a domed lunar city. It was clear for Americans back then that there soon would be cities on the lunar surface. Unfortunately, this also did not happen. But I hope some... Sorry, I have something to say about this too. Um, having a, a, a shipyard in uh, orbit and having um, a, um, a, a go, uh, as a stopping point on the moon would be the first, uh, first ticket out of here, really, realistically. Um, like uh like having uh, having a uh like a place uh you know a spot on the moon um you, you could just do so much more uh like you have a place for your newly constructed ships to fucking land uh and take on supplies or whatever um or like you know you just you you have a lot of options uh starting here if you want to go to mars Star, uh, starbound uh, ship, shipyard uh, and uh, moon base and then go from there uh, and I would be the first one to be like yo put me on the dark side of the moon I'm uh, yeah let's do this they it will and then this future vision might actually not even be so far off from what might come to pass here is another space based one where astronauts are building a lunar city with a huge dome, as seen on the previous illustration, but here as seen from the inside. And what about another one with a futuristic city? Although this one is probably more like early 60s, but the general tune did not change from the 50s. Namely, huge skyscrapers, ubiquitous public transportation on many layers, subway, and of course, monorails everywhere. 
futuristic buildings in the background and of course highways, all nicely stacked atop of each other. While this vision also did not come to pass exactly as seen, we do in fact see some variations of such scenes in some cities on Earth. And so we can see that even though some 50s retro future visions were wildly off, others were actually remarkably visionary and did indeed materialize in some form or are probably going to happen in other ways, shapes or forms in the not too distant future. If you are a futurist like me with a fable for 50s retro futurism, please like and subscribe since it would greatly help this new and small channel and see you in the future. Ah. Well, here's his channel. So uh, he's got a lot of other uh, good stuff on retro futurism. I might actually uh, look at some other stuff later. Uh, thank you, Ultra Future. That's cool. Um, uh, once again, um, this was The Future That Never Was by Ultra Future. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, make sure you go over and show him some love, um, as always. Um, and this is just for the YouTube crowd, so don't go anywhere when I say this. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, like, subscribe, follow, share, all that kind of good stuff. It helps out a lot. Um, be safe, be happy, be healthy. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one. That's